Hello, beautiful Aries, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020, where this month, it's a big month in the sense that we are starting to pick up speed in our retrograde activity. 40% of our planets are going to be in retrograde this month, and that's not the highest that we're going to see all year, but it is still picking up speed, and it really kicked off quite a bit last month with Pluto taking its retrograde in the energy of Capricorn. This month, we will include Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter in that retrograding as well. So it's kind of a big month where I can tell you, Aries, that somewhere towards the middle of the month, you're going to start to feel things kind of slow down or there's like a shift in the energy. You'll be going back over things that have been in your wheelhouse for quite some time and you will also be getting a very big review of things that you've been thinking about, things you've been talking about, things you've been learning or teaching about. They are all going to come back up for review. So I think it's going to be a good month and hopefully you love the new format so make sure that you uh give me or give me your comments in the comment section down below okay all right let's jump in and talk about what's happening for you this month now as we start out this month we're going to start off with a full moon happening in the energy of scorpio now this is going to light up your eighth house okay Now, the full moon says that we need to end something, we need to acknowledge something, or we need to make an adjustment to something that is going on. As well, a full moon in Scorpio lights up this place where we become absolutely aware of what our deepest desires are or what our deepest kind of struggles are. So in the eighth house, which is about joint resources, partnerships, intimacy and anything that has to do with if the other side of it changes you'll be affected as well that's what i consider intimacy right if somebody pulls out of a money deal and you're attached to that you'll be affected obviously if your partner's money could be shifting or changing at this full moon we could also see here that this is an awesome operational time for you to collaborate with someone or maybe you wanted to collaborate back in the day and now it's coming back to your table right there's an acknowledgement that you can adjust something here it's absolutely brilliant of course we have also been in pandemic time so if your taxes are not done or any of those kinds of things I think that an awareness that you need to handle those things also comes to the table if this happens to do for you um Scorpio with something in our relationship and you continue to find that you cannot be vulnerable with this person, place, or thing, whether it be your partner, a bank, whatever, This could be a time, too, where you decide that you want to cut it off and you don't wish to go forward with it anymore. So keep me posted on how this full moon shows up for you and definitely watch the full moon in Scorpio video that'll be on the homepage as well, okay? All right, once we get to the 11th, we've got a busy day. We've got double movement happening. First and foremost, we're going to see Mercury entering into the energy of Gemini. Now Mercury getting out of the slower Taurus energy coming home into Gemini where he is in rulership. He's in domicile here. So really very happy, very content to be doing work here. It lights up the third house for you. The third house is how we communicate. It's where we send and receive messages, where we study, where we teach. There's a lot of communication going on right here. It is also the house of siblings and neighbors and short distance trips. So there's a fair amount of moving about that comes with the third house kind of energy. Now, as Mercury is lighting up here, you can expect to be a little bit busy. Maybe you're hearing from people, lots of phone calls. Oh, you could be having the siblings over. Maybe you're doing something with the neighbors. Even if you're doing it social distancing, you're having a social distancing um, barbecue or something like that. You could definitely see the third house lighting up with communications, texts, emails, phone calls. Goodness knows we're doing a lot of things online right now. So you could definitely find that maybe you even have to balance out how much you are doing online and how much you aren't. Now, The other thing I'm thinking of is that Mercury is going to be moving into the position that we call out of bounds. This is going to happen from the 17th of the month on. Now, what that means for you is when it comes to communications, you want to put that resume out there. Maybe you need help with your website or you want to write that book. You're going to look for communications, messages, 
inspiration, any of those kinds of things, you're going to look outside of your normal realm of thinking. You're going to look out of your normal realm of bounds. The answers literally come out from outside of the spaces that you're normally getting into. Now, what I love about this as well is that as Mercury is moving in this out of bounds kind of way, you feel a little bit encouraged to get out of your comfort zone and maybe go look out of bounds. So this could be learning. Maybe you're learning something as well. We're going to hit a retrograde month here. So you could be going back to learn something as well. I love the movement of uh, Mercury being in, in his domicile energy either way. Now, the other energy we have going on is that Saturn is going to step into his retrograde. Now, Saturn is going to go retrograde at one degree of Aquarius, so just there at the beginning, and it's going to retrograde all the way until September 29th and come back to 25 degrees of Capricorn. So as the retrograde begins, we're going to see it beginning in your 11th house, which is like, okay, we just started some new social things. We just started some new ideas. We just started to get a glimpse of some new long range plans and goals and designs designs that we'd like to go towards, maybe even some new friendships and connections. But then Saturn's going to back up into another one of his home signs. And you got to go back over the structures. You've been working on these things for two and a half years. You will not be surprised at what you're revising, re-editing, re-looking at, re-evaluating as Saturn comes back into Capricorn. Maybe you begin the retrograde looking at and revising um, your friendship zones. And then you're going back to work. You're going to discover, is this the right work for you? Do you feel like you're moving towards your soul level calling? Not only that, are you demanding your value? Are you being a grown up at work, right? Like, are you really taking responsibility for things? But Saturn's going back to firm up that area for the next five months before he leaves. Because when he leaves, you will have mastery over this area. You have crystallized some lessons. So take this next five months pretty seriously. Look back, make sure that these areas are ship shape, okay? On the 13th, we are going to see a couple things happening as well. Mars is going to move into the energy of Pisces, okay? Now, let's just start there. Mars in the energy of Pisces, first of all, it's going to light up your 12th house, so just right behind you on the zodiac. Mars is our action, energy, movement, assertion, this is what I'm doing kind of energy, right? So he likes to be boots on the ground doing things. But when he steps into the watery terrain of Pisces in your 12th house, no less, he's like, I'm not sure what I want to do. Is this a dream? You know, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could do this. I could do that. It's a very in between the worlds kind of motion. And you may not be very clear on what you want or what you want to do. Because remember, Mars is also over our desire, right? The desire. It gives me the desire to go after something. So now you've got Saturn over here backed up into this career sector. Mars is your ruling energy and it's in the 12th house sector. They're having a little conversation like, I don't know, what does Aries want to do? So if it is a time where you feel like you are a little bit undefined, I wouldn't be too stressed about it. Now, what do you use Mars and Pisces for? Clean out the things that need to be cleaned out. Finish up some projects that have been hanging out. If you didn't unpack that box from a year ago, unpack it. Sit down, reground with your spiritual practice. The 12th house is the place of our spiritual practices. If there are things from your past that need to be handled and ship shaped up, go ahead and handle those as well because Mars is also our energy of conflict. He is perfectly happy to have a fight to clear out an area or he's perfectly happy to have a fight in order to advance you forward. So one of the things you got to think of is do you have to go back and handle something from your past, right? Mars will help you be in action with that energy. Now the other thing that's going to happen is that Venus is going to step into her retrograde. Now as Venus begins this retrograde, She's going to begin back here at 21 degrees of Gemini. She's going to go all the way until June 25th and then end this retrograde at 5 degrees of Gemini. So the entire movement is going to be in this Gemini energy for you, okay? As Venus retrogrades in Gemini, first of all, during a Venus retrograde, we're re-looking at, rethinking value. The things that we value, are you being valued? Are you loving yourself? Are you getting the love and support and attention that you need? How are you making money? How are your relationships doing? And all of these things are happening in a very mental energy. Gemini is thinking about these things. Gemini is communicating, I need something. 
My needs aren't being met. I think I should be making more money for that, right? Venus and Gemini, this is the other place too. I think it could be taking you back some education, some training. Maybe it takes you even back to journaling. Were you finding peace in your life when you were journaling? Do you find peace? Do you think that there is value where you could make money in blogging, in writing, in teaching, in anything like that? Venus can take you back to these things in the third house that can still have value for you. Now, the other thing I think of coming back in this third house is during a Venus retrograde. I don't think it's a brilliant time to sign any new contracts, right? I don't think it's a good time to sign any new documentation, but if something comes your way and it's already been in the works, Venus retrograde may actually be useful for you to go back and catch any details that you need to revise or you need to review in this particular time. And if you need to buy a house, you need to buy a car, you need to buy a whatever. As long as you are already in the process, Venus may actually help you by bringing a financial deal to the table a little bit. So take advantage of this time to review that and definitely watch the videos on the channel on Venus Retrograde as well, okay? On the 14th, we're going to see Jupiter step into Jupiter's retrograde. Now, Jupiter is going to begin his retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and he's going to end it at 18 degrees of Capricorn, and that's going to be in September. When Jupiter goes into a retrograde, it's first of all going to be tip top in your 10th house. So this is, again, we're doing a review of career, of the soul level calling. What are you doing out in the world? Because this doesn't have to be your career. What are you going to do, Aries, if you're on the outside of the career? you've already retired take this interpretation to the soul level calling what are you known for what do you have to offer and to give to the world because this is what we're talking about in this particular energy so one of the things i would tell you is because jupiter is very big right it's a very big and very expansive energy where have you been being overconfident based on the skills that you can actually bring to the table or based on the capacity that you have to do that particular activity, right? This is a wonderful time where you can look at it so that it doesn't lead you to a major mistake down the road, like taking on a job that you don't really want, taking on a task, taking on a reputation, taking on a relationship, because sometimes in the 10th house, we get married, we get divorced, we change who we are or how we're known in public, okay? So this is a time where you get to Use this Jupiter retrograde part of the transit to ask these important questions of what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What can I maybe use more education and training on? What am I ready to do right now? Right? This is a question of seeing the wisdom of what you know and what you have to give and then putting it into a structure. So be real honest with yourself during this retrograde time. If you need more training, if you need more information, if you need to shift your belief focus in order to be successful in this area, this is going to be helpful time for you to be able to do that. Okay? On the 20th, we see the sun entering into the energy of Gemini. So it will officially be Gemini season. We become a little bit more chatty where the sun goes. It brings light, heat, life, and vitality. You've already got Venus happening and working over here. Mercury is still over here at this particular time. And now we've got the sun. So it is a full house over here in the third house. The third house with the sun here, we become curious. We become sociable. I want to talk about things. I want to know about things. I am curiosity at its absolute finest, and I am buzzing with my air qualities to find out information. It's not completely emotional. It has a little bit of a detachment, which I think as we're slowing down and doing this review over this next handful of months, but certainly this week, it's going to be nice to kind of say, okay, hold on. I don't need to go crazy. I just need to be curious about facts and information. So it's a wonderful energy. This could also bring that book writing, writing, speaking, documentation back to your table as well. Now, on the 22nd, what we're going to see is packing this third house even fuller. Your third house is a house of power, if you haven't grabbed that this month, is we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Gemini. You want to plant those seeds of intention here at this new moon. And it's a good day. Even though we've got this slowdown of retrograde energy, with the sun here, it's a great day with this new moon to take some initiative. Start something new. Start studying something new. Start studying something you went back to. Go back to teaching. Work out those lesson plans. You know, bring information forward. It's a wonderful day for that. But whatever it is, you can ask for your fresh start here, whether it's be to be that you completely start a project over or you just ask for a fresh perspective and how to get something done. The other thing that keeps, like, 
keep being shown is like reading. You know, have you had time to catch up on that reading? Well, while we're here in quarantine, maybe you have time to do that. Or a conversation, maybe you need to call your friend from the past. You've got Mars in the 12th house. So there could certainly be some beautiful communication that can re-begin right here for you. Now, as we close out the month, we're going to see our communication planet Mercury moving on and getting into the energy of Cancer. Now, this is going to light up your fourth house space Aries, home, family, real estate, property, um, things from the past, your own psychological foundation, the things that make you feel secure. This comes into more emotional territory than Mercury is typically comfortable with. But what it does is it shifts us at this point in the month, right? So you start to remember and think Mercury or communicate Mercury about things from the past. Like, oh, do you remember that time we went to the place? And you're just bringing up these memories and it's lovely. Or, you know, some of the experiences we continue to hear about is people are taking on activities and they're like, oh my gosh, my parents taught me this 15 years ago and I never remembered that I knew this or that I knew how to do it. You maybe feel a call to go back to something from the past and talk about it and be with it and be with the emotions of some things that are coming up this month as well. We've had moons happening, including a full moon happening in Scorpio. To process between the heart and the mind is an absolutely brilliant and beautiful thing. So with this particular transit with Mercury here, I think that this is a wonderful time to do this. I also want to just throw this out there. Mercury in the fourth house is a decision-making kind of transit as well. So maybe you're making decisions about what's really important to you, right? What's really important in your home and in your home here, your foundations, right? What are you willing to spend the currency that you are paying for life with? You are paying for life with the currency of time. So what are you spending your time on? Who gets your time? What gets your time? I think that Mercury is going to bring some of these questions to the table. And remember, on top of that, we're in a little bit of a review over the next five months. So this is a beautiful place to make some decisions about what really gets Aries attention, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that you like this video. You comment, you share, you subscribe. I hope you check out the videos with the collaborations. I have officially named that segment the Eat and Greets because we have a snack and then we talk about astrology and you guys get to greet astrologers from other pages. So Nadia Shaw, Patrick Arundel will be coming around. We've had Brian Coulter, Sasha Benedetti, and so many more are coming. I'm getting them lined up, so I hope that you will definitely check them out. I love you so much, Aries, and I look forward to seeing you and hearing your feedback of this style video next month. Bye, my friends.